Here's my big update of being a C7 Corvette Stingray driver after one year. So the car is still fast and it looks good even after one year. Now I do have one more pro and one more con to add to the list since doing my six month review that I will get into in a minute. As for my six month review, I read quite a few negative comments about me actually having quibbles with the car. Number three on my list was the sensitive electric windows, which I have since taken off my con list after somebody was kind enough to point out to me the unique way these windows work. You have to push or pull down a second time in the same direction to stop the window from moving. It's not like that on all the other cars I've driven where you just reverse the direction of your push or pull and the window stops. But to Chevrolet's credit, I did comb through the manual and find where it does reveal this instruction. Even though I find this method a bit awkward, at least I know how it works now. Number two on my six month list was the thermostat dial, which I don't particularly care for. Somebody commented for me just to set the thermostat to 70 degrees and forget about it. Here's the thing with that. If it's 30 degrees outside, it is true that it doesn't matter whether the thermostat is set to 70 or 85, it will still blow out the same amount of hot air. But the heat will shut off when it gets to 70, if set to 70, which it's supposed to do. However, when you've been exposed to 20 or 30 degree temps for 5 minutes or so, then 70 degrees does not feel very warm. Likewise, when it's 95 degrees outside and the car cools down to 70 and the AC shuts off, you're still most likely going to be hot. So you're still going to have to keep fiddling with the dial to make the air stay on, whether to cool you off or to heat you up more. A thermostat dial would be great for long trips, but for trips of 15 minutes or less, which my trips mainly consist of, I'd rather not have a thermostat dial with lots of play in it and just let me cut the air on and off when I deem necessary, like every other car I've personally owned. Hopefully you get the gist of what I'm saying. And finally, number three on my six month list was how the rainwater that beads up on the roof will drip down into the car when you first start to drive off. But I've gotten used to this and I just be careful not to move my windows down during the first 30 seconds of the drive. But I do want to emphasize that I've never owned a car that let water drip in like this one. Before I get to my one new pro and one new con, I do want to mention that my summer tires that came with the car made it through the winter in Southeast Virginia just fine. They say not to drive on these tires if it's below 40 degrees. Well, I did. And the tires did just fine. Maybe I just got lucky. Who knows? And now it's time for the one new pro that I discovered in the last six months that I really like. And that is the remote vehicle start function. This allows you to start the car from a far off distance like your bedroom window. You just push the lock button on the remote and then hold the rotate button for four seconds and the car will start while staying locked. But the really cool thing is that the defroster will automatically come on in the cold temps and start defrosting the windshield. So when you get to the car, the windows will be all clear. Also, in the summer, the AC will come on automatically and cool down the car. And if you forget you left the car on, the engine will automatically cut off after 15 minutes. Perhaps this feature is available on a lot of other cars, but this is the first time I've ever experienced it on a vehicle. Sadly, I have one new con to add to the list, and that is the air dams. The air dams, or air deflectors as some people call them, scrape and get damaged too easily because they are set too low to the ground. They supposedly put these on the car to help with gas mileage or to keep the front of the car firmly planted on the road when going in excess of 120 miles an hour. All I know is that I live in a place where the land is fairly flat 
and I have still managed to scuff them up so badly, it is time to replace them, which I'm not going to do because I'm not going to spend $150 on three pieces of plastic that are just going to get scuffed up again and fall off. There are three pieces to these air dams, a left, a right, and a center, and they are only about three inches off the ground. So anywhere there's a little divot in the road or perhaps the end of your driveway, if you're not going at a 45 degree angle, the air dams will scuff the pavement and make a dreadful scraping noise. These air dams are just too low. Three inches is not enough clearance for a daily driver. Five inches would be a lot more reasonable. Now I'm afraid after having the car for one year, I'm going to have to readjust my least favorite thing about it. I mentioned this aggravation in both my prior Corvette videos, but I'm going to have to bring it to the forefront today. This has become my personal least favorite thing about this car. And I would be willing to trade or give up just about anything to have this feature available. I'd even be willing to give up the little storage compartment in the back trunk, which by the way, can hold juice as well as milk. And here we go again. I wish I could recline the freaking seat. I often go out to my car on my lunch break and I desperately long to be able to cut on some music, recline the seat and just chill for a while. But no, I'm unable to do that because the seat won't recline. Folks, let's discuss the C8 Corvette again. One more time, just one more time, just for the fun of it. So here I am on the Chevy website looking at the new C8 Corvette. And although I've yet to see one in person, and that could change my opinion somewhat, but just looking at the pictures, I'm just not digging it that much. I don't really care for that wide front face. And that thing on the side seems a bit exaggerated for my taste. But that rear end, that's where the car really starts to get downright repulsive. I just don't find it agreeable. I do like the rapid blue color though. And if I were to get a C8, that's the color I'd choose. Either that or black, because you can never go wrong with black on a sports car. But folks, I came across some pics on the internet that totally blew me away. A 1968 rear engine concept Corvette going by the name of the Astro 2. Now this is a cool looking rear engine car. Here's to hoping the C9 looks more like this and less like a C8. But moving on and to end on a positive note, I will reiterate once again, my C7 Corvette still remains fast and it still looks good.